Hey, it's Joseph here. As promised, I bring you the Asus ZenBook S13 OLED review. I've actually had this laptop for quite some time now. I might actually have had this bit too long. So Asus, don't worry, I did not lose it and I will be returning it as soon as this video is up and done. And that is also the message for those of you who ask me if they can have the laptops that I already have reviewed. Unfortunately, I don't get to keep them. I do have to send these things back. But since I have spent a good amount of time with this specific laptop, I'm confident that I should be able to bring you some good information. And as always, this is going to be a long but thorough review. So get a drink, sit back and watch. By the way, as a disclaimer, this specific configuration, the model number of the laptop is UX5304V. Your unit may have a slight different specs and what I'm about to say may or may not be true for your specific model or the unit. For the exterior, please refer to my previous video where I have gone over its overall design and the ports, link in the description. But this plasma ceramic aluminum body is quite unique and should be mentioned again. I did some research and this is basically a recycled aluminum and Asus is using this exclusive material that is supposedly both sustainable and hard wearing. And it does definitely feel different from other type of materials that I have felt on the laptops. My wife says that she doesn't really like this feeling as it feels not smooth and a bit dusty. But I actually like the feel of this material and it doesn't collect fingerprints as other materials do. As you can see, you can just glide across it but still looks quite nice. And in my humble opinion, I think it really does look nice. This specific model is a basalt gray. I really like Asus's simple A logo imprinted as some geometrical shape. By the way, they did really go with the sustainable theme here. The keycaps are made with recycled plastics. The laptop box was made out of recycled paper and can be used as a laptop stand. Materials aside, the overall body is quite solid yet very, very light at 2.2 pounds or one kilogram. The thinness is less than a half of an inch or hair over one centimeter. One viewer raised a concern about its cooling capabilities. So I'll be sure to go over that in the later portion of the video. I must give props to Asus making the overall design and the selection of ports really well done on this laptop. It even has a full size HDMI and USB type A ports and two Thunderbolt 4 ports are really nice to see on this thin and light laptop. One thing that I might have liked on this laptop is a full-size SD card reader or perhaps a micro SD card slot, which is missing. If you prefer small laptops like I do, you will definitely enjoy its size and the portability. When you open the laptop, it can be open to 180 degrees and the back edge of the laptop lifts it off from the surface that it is resting on. The two tiny rubber feet protects your tabletop and the laptop from being scratched. But this design is where I had encountered a problem. The top edge is a bit too sharp and it digs into your lap when you're using it on your lap, especially with the shorts on. Some other laptops have some heat issues where the bottom panel gets too hot to be used on the bare skin, but no such issue found on this one. Perhaps just wear a long pants so that the edge doesn't dig into your skin. And with that, let's look at the interior. When I say interior, I mean the stuff you see when you open the laptop, such as the display and the keyboard and the touchpad, not the disassembly part. But if you're wondering what the actual inside under the hood looks like after disassembling the bottom panel, then do watch the unboxing video of mine where I did that. Starting from the top, you can see the webcam and the microphone holes. It does have an IR camera for Windows Hello 
and it works quite well. I have been using Windows Hello on this laptop and it is quite convenient. And also let's test out the webcam and the microphone. So this is a webcam and microphone test of Asus ZenBook S13 OLED model. I can see the webcam here and this is when I'm looking at the webcam and this is me looking at the screen and you are certainly hearing this sound via the microphone there. And I can see there are a bit of artificial sharpening that's going on on the image and a bit of softening on certain type of spots. However, do keep in mind that my overall setup isn't really that bright. So if you are in better light, you may see better results in terms of the visual. And this is what it sounds like too. I still prefer my DSLR, but this would be fine for video conferences. My Asus offers some additional features to the webcam. You can go from everything off to lighting optimization, background blurring, gaze correction, motion tracking, appearance filter, but I actually prefer to use the webcam without any sort of feature. So this is where I'm gonna leave it at. Below the webcam is obviously the screen. As the name Asus ZenBook S13 OLED suggests, this 13 inch OLED screen is one of the main features of this laptop. The resolution is 2880 by 1800 and it is kind of hard to say because it is a quite an odd resolution. It is a bit higher than 1440p resolution but less than 4K. I think the overall screen would have been fine at 1080p or even 1440p but for the marketing purposes and all because people tend to think more resolution is always better but at least it is not overstuffed at 4K which can actually result in your laptop running slower. And thanks to the high resolution, the overall image is notably sharp and clear. Speaking of the image, I must mention that this screen supports 100% of DCI-P3 color gamut and the colors are actually Pantone validated. Perhaps the footage going through the camera and a YouTube compression is not doing the justice. So you can certainly expect better color than what you're actually seeing on a screen. And these color gamut and Pantone validation basically means that the screen is capable of reproducing lots of colors accurately. For those of you who are looking to do work that has to do with some color, such as graphic design, photography, video editing, or any kind of design like architecture, you can certainly rely on this screen. By the way, I was able to make this desktop background art by using Adobe Firefly's text to image AI engine, using fancy AI stuff to make plain old Windows wallpapers. Please do note that the screen is glossy and will catch reflections. I am yet to come across an OLED screen that isn't glossy. However, since it is capable of 550 nits of brightness, you can blast the brightness and may not have the reflections after you brighten the screen, but it is now burning up on the camera, so I'm gonna reduce it down. Although I am actually fine without, but the screen itself is not a touch screen. So you can keep those oily fingers away from the glossy screen and not worry about the fingerprints all over. And for those of you who care, it does have 60 Hertz of refresh rate and 0.2 millisecond of response time. The bezels are not the thinnest that I have seen nor the thickest, but I found the overall size of the screen to be quite nice sized and I really did enjoy it. Below the screen, you can see a simple Asus ZenBook logo. If you open the hinge all the way, you can see the air vents. Further down the gray body above the keyboard and the below the keyboard, it feels like the same material as a top panel. So since you would be resting your hand onto this panel over here, if you did not like the feel of the top lid, you may not like resting your palms on this. Other than that, the keyboard is pleasing to use. The keys are quite well spaced and sound quite nice.
I do like it's somewhat plain and simple white backlighting and I can find the keys where I typically expect them to be. Page up and down and home and keys are all available via using the function key with the arrow keys. And as I like using print screen key, I like the fact that they have a dedicated key for it. I wasn't so sure, but it turns out that I like the delete key swapped with the power button. So delete key is on the very far corner. I've seen many laptops having a power button at the very corner, but it is far too often that I hit it without realizing it. But this arrangement helps to alleviate most of the problems. However, if you do accidentally hit the power button, you will sleep the laptop. So just keep that in mind. Moving further down the keyboard, you can see a very large touchpad. I think it is a probably the biggest touchpad I've seen on 13 inch laptops. And if you have seen any of my previous laptop videos, you might actually have seen this coming, but I generally think the touchpads are not bigger, the better. I do have accidental touches as my palm will rest on the either side of the touchpad and clip the corners. And in general, the palm rejection works quite well to prevent my palm from causing the accidental clicks. But there were actually a handful of times where the laptop just stopped rejecting the accidental touches for whatever reason. And my type cursor just jumped around places as I type away. And if you're actually physically pressing down on a touchpad, which causes an actual click, then nothing is going to prevent your cursor jumping around. So that is quite annoying. So whenever that got a bit too much for me, I just held down the FN key and then F6 to disable the touchpad. However, the touchpad is at the center of the keyboard, meaning that I can just kind of distribute my palm evenly on either side and rest them and it is quite comfortable. As to the actual use of the touchpad, all the multi features work really well as there is plenty of space to fit all of your fingers and go ahead and swipe with four fingers to cause different multi gestures and minimize, maximize all the screens you want. And I often see a large touchpad having a bit of a wobble whenever I am kind of tapping on them. But this unit had a rock solid touchpad with a glass top that is pleasant to glide your fingers around. And going to the sides of the laptop, actually there is a written print that says Dolby Vision Atmos and sound by Herman and Carden. They both have to do with sound and its speakers in addition to the vision. So let's test out the speakers. For a small laptop, it does pack some punch for its loudness and good sounding bass. And I'm surprised to see down firing speakers like this to sound pretty good. Perhaps these prints actually do mean something. Let's talk about its specification. This laptop has Intel's latest 13th gen CPU i7-1355U. With DDR5, 32 gigabytes of RAM, this unit came with one terabyte of solid state storage. For network, it can do Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. The total battery capacity is 63 watt hours and the included charging brick is capable of driving 65 watts of power. The charger like this is really light and compact, yet capable of pushing 65 watt of power. And although it is not sponsored, I actually paid my own money for Spigen 65 watt charger and it does have two USB type C ports and capable of driving 65 watt 
from one of these ports and it does have a foldable prong and it is slightly smaller profile as well as detachable cable which you can use it for different type of devices or different purposes and in either case the whole setup is very light and portable in addition to the battery life of the laptop being really long so if you do need additional charge then you can quickly top it off Speaking of battery and power, I was able to run this laptop for 8 hours and 10 minutes multiple times playing YouTube videos, typing out outline for this video, responding to emails, all relatively light loads, but 8 hours is quite impressive. I can basically be away from the power for the entire workday, and I've taken this laptop on all of my recent work trips across the US, and I find any laptops that are larger than 13 inch is a quite a bit of a hassle to use on planes, so I do think 13 inch laptops are the best sizes for me. In general, I found this laptop to be managing the heat and the noise quite well to answer that comment. And 13th gen i7 CPU feels quite efficient and well optimized. And the light loads on this laptop will not really spin any of the fans. And even doing some architectural drawings, 3D work and video editing, I had not noticed the fans kicking up and being bothersome. But yeah, the planes were loud. I had my earphones in, but that wasn't the only setup that I used this laptop. And just to be clear, the fan mode was set to standard in the My Asus app. The fans did kick off whenever I ran the benchmarks and it did sound like it was moving quite a bit of air, but it wasn't high pitched and it was more of a low whoosh sound. And for the actual benchmark results, and it did okay for the CPU bound tasks. It would have done better if I had pegged it with the performance mode, but I honestly wasn't looking for a heavy performance on this laptop and it did all the tests that I wanted just fine. Revit, SketchUp, Premiere, video editing, Photoshop, and all browser based tasks. So what about the price? I was able to find this exact model on Amazon, Newegg, and b and for $1,400. That's actually the price that I pay for my personal thin and light laptop, Dell XPS 13 Twin 1, three years ago. If I was in a market for a new laptop, I can easily decide on this Asus ZenBook as I really, really like this laptop. Normally, this XPS 13 will fly with me to places, but Asus ZenBook S13 was just better. I kind of hope that Asus somehow forgets that I have this laptop because I know I will be sad to return this laptop. Nonetheless, that is it for this laptop and the video. Thanks for sticking around very long. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. And thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.